Okay, today I'm going to talk about the Confederate Bowie knives. And here uh, I'm wearing a D guard Bowie knife. Uh, this is a knife that I put together myself and uh, for the purpose of reenacting, I put a safety pin, which I just pull out. I just pull it out, and now the blade will come out of the sheath. Uh, when we do Civil War reenacting, the knives should be tied. But this is this, using this little pin that goes actually through this little hole in the blade here. It's better than tying it. And it's a guarantee that the knife is not going to fall out of your sheath when you fall to the ground or something like that. The last thing you want to do is actually fall on this. This knife is extremely sharp. Um, I keep it sharp for utility purposes. Uh, you know as well as I do that if you're a Civil War reenactor, you do a lot of camping. And uh, at times a good knife comes in handy. And uh, this knife seems to hold an edge pretty well. I can chop with it and cut with it. Uh, its blade length is 17 inches. Confederate knives all varied in um, uh, the length of blade and uh, a lot of variation. Uh, you got to be careful with uh, uh, eBay. A lot of People sell so-called Confederate knives on eBay, which are nothing more than fake. Uh, a lot of people are spending hundreds of dollars. I haven't seen one go for thousands, but they're spending four, or five hundred dollars on junk. Right? This is um, an Atlanta was, I should say, an Atlanta cutlery knife. It's their Bowie that they sell, and I took the handle apart. And I made a new handle. I put, I made the ferrule, and I put it on there. I rebent the guard to reflect a more um, authentic look to the knife. Uh, in that process, I do shorten the blade a little bit. I shorten the scabbard to match the knife. I put a belt loop also on the scabbard, and uh, in here. If you notice, there's a little wire that's tied around the loop a little bit on that one end. That tilts the knife off to the side. All right, it throws off its center of gravity. All right. Uh, it's a little awkward to have the knife hang straight down. It's always easy to have it because it, for, it gives you the ability to move better. Um, uh, originally, these knives were carried by Confederate soldiers. They're more, they, they reflect more of an early war period early to middle war. By that time, uh, the knives started to fall out of favor uh, because they weren't used as weapons as much. Right? These knives were not intended for utility purposes. They were issued to be weapons. And there is accounts of battles where they actually threw down their guns and ran after the Yankees with these. And the Yankees uh, soon departed. All right, there is an account given of a uh, Confederate and a Yankee. Uh, they met on a fence and they challenged each other, or the Confederate, I guess he was a Mississippian, I'm not sure, I don't remember offhand, uh, challenged him to a knife fight. And it turns out that the Yankee got an, a lucky stroke with his knife and nearly severed the head of the Confederate. Yeah, you would not expect that, but uh, nonetheless, that's what happened. Uh, the Yankee was de uh, delirious, and he fell down. Uh, he had cut some wounds on him, and after the ghastly sight, he was probably ready to faint. And a Seminole Indian came along and finished off the Yankee. Right? <laughs> but uh, of that account that I, I gave, uh, at least the general account, I read it here. And the updated Confederate Bowie Knife Guide by Lee Hadaway. Uh, this is a good book. And, you know, if you're a collector of knives and you see a knife on eBay, uh, it's always wise to get books first. 
all right? You do your research, you study up on knives, and then you know what you're looking at, at least. Because a lot, right away, I, I email guys on uh, these sites, like eBay and, and other auction sites, and I, and I tell them that the knife is fake, and yet they're, they're misrepresenting what they're selling. And a lot of people are spending a lot of money on these. So uh, my advice is not to buy knives on eBay anyway, in terms of originals, all right, generally speaking. But here, it gives a lot of um, illustrations. Since I'm promoting the book, I don't think he's gonna mind me showing some of what's in the book. As you can see, as I flip through the pages, very uh, different types of knives, all right. So we're gonna put this back down here. Now there was one guy who ate, um, sent me a message and he said that my knife was Farby in my last video. And uh, I'm assuming he meant that by saying that Confederate soldiers just didn't carry knives. And the fact is, Confederate soldiers did carry knives. All right, that's why they were made, to be issued. All right? And uh, here are some pictures of Confederate soldiers with knives. And we'll just run through them real quick. There are some other pictures of whole units uh, with, uh, with Bowie knives, I mean big knives, just like the one that you see here, holding their knives up like this in the photograph. Uh, probably about 100 guys or so holding their Bowie knives. Um, that was uh, an Arkansas picture I'm thinking of, I, I do believe. I couldn't find that picture on hand. But um, there are other pictures, a lot of pictures with Confederate soldiers and units with Bowie knives. And so they were carried and they were used at times as weapons. But like I said, most Civil War battles were fought uh, with the rifle. And they didn't uh, really come in close contact enough to use their knives. Uh, the bayonet itself was um, not used that often. Probably about three to four percent of all casualties were inflicted by the bayonet. All right, uh, probably another 25 percent artillery and, and the rest were by gunfire. Of course, most uh, Civil War soldiers died from disease, but in terms of battle wounds, all right, the gun inflicted the most. And uh, so, uh, being that uh, also on these knives, on the original knives, a lot of times the belt loops would break and that would make the knife very uh, cumbersome and difficult to um, to carry. All right, and given the fact that they didn't use them that much in actual fighting, uh, they started to fall out of favor. Um, I don't have any problem carrying a knife. If I was a soldier, I would always carry a knife. Just because I like knives and they're a very handy tool and uh, this knife that I made from an Atlanta cutlery knife, it's very light, has a 3 16th inch blade. Steel is tough. It does spring back, all right? And it holds an edge pretty well. And uh, if I was a real soldier in the Civil War, I would carry this knife as long as I could. And it, uh, it doesn't bother me. So in my impression, uh, I like to carry a knife, and I don't think that that is far be at all. And uh, but anyway, that's uh, what I what I think. And if you don't want to wear a knife, then don't wear a knife. <laughs> Another good reference book on Civil War equipment is this um, book. It's put out by Time Life Books. It's called Echoes of Glory: Arms and Equipment of the Confederacy. And I think uh, here we can see just on this page alone, we see a bunch of uh, Bowie knives, 
Here you see a group of three guys with pistols and Bowie knives. All right. And they, like I said, a lot of variety in the knives. And uh, this is a good reference book. It gives you a lot of pictures of other things. Um, for example, my jacket that you're seeing me wear right now is a variation of this jacket of uh, Private uh, Jenkins' jacket, 21st Virginia Infantry. All right. And so this is a, another good reference book for the uh, Confederate uh, Civil War reenactor, the Confederate reenactor. They also have one on Yankee arms and equipment, in case you do the Yankee impression. Here is uh, also some other pictures of some of the knives that I made.